Hi everyone, and a big welcome back to our conversation series. We're continuing with our conversation on the topic of shopping, and we're going to be covering a few phrases in this particular video. At the supermarket car park, or parking lot. The supermarket looks as busy as ever. Do we need a basket or a trolley? We'll get a trolley. We have a lot of shopping to do. Do you have change? We need a coin for the trolley. I have a coin. Okay, you go and get it and we'll meet inside. Okay. We enter the supermarket. Okay, so what's first on the list? Fruit. We're getting apples, oranges and bananas. We'll see about the apples first. Okay, we have an offer here. Buy two, get one half price. Then get three. Done. Orange is next. How many will we get? I think we'll need about two bags at least. We'll get three then. The kids love oranges. Right, no problem. Can you grab some lemons? How many do you want? Can we get them loose? I don't need a lot of them. Just a couple. Yeah, I think they sell them loose too. Now, how about the bananas? I'll get the bananas and weigh them on the scales. Okay. Now to the vegetables. What do we need? We need onions, potatoes, carrots, broccoli, and some cucumbers, beetroot, and tomatoes for salad. Oh, and garlic too. Right, that sounds like a lot of veggies. Let's go and get them. These tomatoes don't look fresh. Did you check the best before date? What's wrong with them? They look fine to me. No, actually one of them is bad. Really? Ah, I didn't see that one. I'll get another pack now. Moving to the next section. Where next? We need eggs, flour and some baking chocolate. Baking chocolate? Yes. Hmm, that sounds interesting. What have you in mind? We'll see later. Great. Fancy making some brownies? Uh, maybe. Get the eggs. I'll get two packs. How many bags of flour do we need? Just one, and get some baking powder there. Okay, eggs, flour, chocolate and baking powder. All done. The dairy aisle. Okay, what's next? We need milk and cheese. I'll get the milk and you get whatever cheese you like. I'm getting brie and some cheddar. Right, once we have that done, we'll move on to the meat section. The meat aisle. Would you rather have a whole chicken or chicken fillets? Chicken fillets will do. I fancy some beef sausages too, and I'll get some minced meat for burgers. Now we need to get some sweet stuff for the kids. Lucky them. Confectionery then. The confectionery section. Mommy, could we get these? It's alright, darling. You can put them in the trolley. We need two packs of Oreos and two blocks of milk chocolate. Okay, are we done? Actually, I want to check the clothing section just to see if they have anything new in. I thought we were just shopping for groceries today. I'll just take a quick look. I won't be long. The clothing section. Hey, look at this jacket. What do you think? Looks fantastic. Can we go now? Just kidding. Seriously, what do you think? Seriously, I think it looks great on you. It's on sale. 50% off. Well, if you need it, I think it's a bargain. You can always bring it back if you change your mind. I think their return policy is 28 days. As long as I have the receipt, it won't be a problem. Put it in the trolley then. Ah, that reminds me. I need to go to customer services to return this phone. Are you getting it changed or getting it a refund? Oh, refund. Definitely. You know, I saw that beige jacket first. But when I saw the price of it, I thought it was a little bit dear. You mean it's a rip-off? Yeah, way too expensive. At customer services... 
Hello, can I help you? Yes, I'd like to return this phone. That's no problem. Do you have your receipt? Yes, right here. Yes, that's fine. I see you paid by card. I did. Can you please insert your card into the card reader? Just enter your PIN number. Just sign there, please. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, that's done. Let's go and get these things. Which checkout are we going to? Self-service? No, we'll go to the cashier and get them all scanned there. At the checkout. Hi, how are you doing? Very good, thank you. Do you need any bags today? No, thank you. Do you have a club card? I do. Thank you. Are you paying by cash or card? Card. That's 90 pounds. Just enter your card now, please. Enter your PIN, please. Sure. And here's your receipt. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. At the beginning of the conversation, we talked about a trolley and a basket. When we go shopping, and especially if it's in a supermarket, you'll find trolleys there for you to use. In some other English-speaking countries, they call it a shopping cart, and sometimes just a cart. Now, if you don't have a lot of shopping to do and you just need a few items, you can use a basket. In the UK, some supermarkets won't let you have a trolley unless you insert or put in a one pound coin, as you can see in the following short clip. And what you need is a pound coin. You put the pound coin in here, you click it in, and then it will release this little guy. And then you actually get your pound back when you come back because all you do is bring your cart up, stick this back into it, and the pound, like, it pushes the pound coin right out. Oh, clever. At the beginning of the conversation, I described the supermarket situation as as busy as ever. This simply means it's very busy, as it is during the holidays, after office hours, or during the weekends. My wife said to me, okay, you go and get it and we'll meet inside. Here, get just means bring. There are other ways to ask somebody to get the trolley or the cart. Uh, two other ways being grab a trolley or bring a trolley. Now let's watch the following scenes to show this. So first things first, I need to grab all my reusable bags, which I keep in this top drawer here. We always start with like the fresh produce stuff, so let's see what I need to grab. After we had got the eggs and flour, I asked, where next? This simply means, where are we going to next? It's just a shortened form of saying the same thing. There are other ways to ask the same question, and just note that these are not grammatically correct, but it's how we take the language and shorten it. Other ways to say it are, where are we off to next? Or, where to next? I also said, oranges next. Again, this is simply a shorter way to say, we'll get or buy oranges next. Or, the next thing we will do is buy oranges. After we had finished getting the brie and cheddar, I said, we'll move on to the meat section. Move on here means to continue doing something or dealing with the next coming thing or task. It's very commonly used by native English speakers. Money. We can't talk about shopping without talking about money and spending it. Now, we'd all love to have everything for free, but that's not going to happen. As we know, money comes in different forms, coins, and notes from the UK or bills from North America. When you ask, do you have change? As my wife asked in the dialogue, she was asking me if I had the money in the form of coins. But if you ask, do you have cash? You're asking them or asking someone if they have money in any form, whether notes or coins. Now, uh, what's the following clip so you can see how cash is used? 
But to buy an Oyster card, um, you have to have cash, and I don't have that either, so ACM is the first stop. Let's not forget that we carry money today in the form of debit and credit cards as well. And also at the time of making this video, which is March 2021, with digital currency in some parts of the world. Next, we move on to offers and deals that we talked about in the conversation. This is the best part of shopping for some people. <laughs> when we go shopping, we often see special offers and they usually give us the opportunity to save money, which is never a bad thing. For example, buy two, get one half price. This is an offer. It simply means that when you buy two products related to this offer, you'll be able to buy another one at half the usual price. Not bad, eh? A Forty percent of grocery, <laughs> our grocery shop, is under some kind of offer. There are different kinds of offers that you can find. Here's an example of a few of them. Half price, up to 50% off. Sale now on, 40p only. 40p is short for 40 pence. Three for the price of two. Buy one, get one free. And many more. Offers are also known as deals. You'll hear people talking about good, great, or bad deals depending on the price of the item. Now, what's the next couple of clips with the word deal used in them? Here's the first one. I can sometimes get those for just over 50 cents a can, but not always, so it's a pretty good deal. And here's the second one. I feel like they have some things that are a better deal there and some things that are a worse deal, pretty much like every grocery store. Okay, we can't talk about offers and deals without talking about bargains, which are always great, and ripoffs, which are not great ever. I hate ripoffs. You say that something is a bargain when you can get it for a relatively very cheap price. If you find a leather jacket, for instance, for £20, that's a bargain, provided the leather jacket is new, or as good as new. I love getting a bargain. I love feeling like I've gotten a bargain. Now, if you believe that something is overpriced, that means you think its price is higher than its real value. Then you can say, it's a ripoff. And you can also use that as a verb, ripoff. To be ripped off or to get ripped off. Here's an example for you. Two months ago, I got ripped off. I bought a pair of shoes for 90 pounds and today I saw them on sale for only 20 pounds. That would make you sick. Now, in the conversation, my wife said concerning a jacket that she had been looking at, that she thought it was a little bit dear. Here, dear means expensive. There are some other ways to say that something is expensive. For example, it's not cheap. It's a bit pricey. It's a bit expensive. She told me the price of it. I told her it was a ripoff. And then she replied, yeah, way too expensive. When she described it as being way too expensive, she meant that it was more expensive than it should have been. And we can also express the same idea by saying, it's far too expensive. It's much too expensive. On the other hand, if something is much cheaper than it normally would be, which is brilliant, we would say, it's so cheap. It's quite cheap. It's very cheap. When something is extremely cheap, the best one of all, you can say simply, it's extremely cheap, or my personal favorite, it's dirt cheap. When something's price is what you would expect to pay, you can describe it as reasonable. Some people might say that 30 pounds is a reasonable price for a food processor. This right here is why I don't buy granola because I make 
granola for way cheaper. Oh, way, way, way cheaper. Some of this will last only a week. Some of this will last a week and a half. Some of it will last way more than a week and a half. The packaging. We talked about packaging in the conversation. That various food items came in certain packages. And nowadays, food does come in different kinds of packaging. Listen to the following ones and uh, see which ones you are most familiar with. Bags. So I can't find the huge bags of it right now that we normally would buy and stock up and we're out of that. Need some more onions. I go through a bag of this in like a month. Boxes. And then two boxes of these Chobani yogurts. Packs. Look at that. Oh my gosh, we have this cereal eight pouches breakfast pack. Cans. This one is used mainly in American English. Tins, British English. Picked up a box of 12 tomato sauce cans. And then I did go for a tin of tuna, which I'm going to have uh, in one of my meals, my um, tray bake. Jars. Today we're just giving you a quick little demonstration on the different fermenting jars that can be used when fermenting foods. But I like to use a half gallon jar because I like to make sure that I get a lot of sauerkraut juice. And tubs. When I think of tubs, I think of ice cream. Yum. And then from there she's going to be holding the tub of ice cream. Sometimes, though, items like fruits or vegetables don't come in any kind of packaging, so we say they are loose. Um, sweet potatoes, I got these loose, these are huge, and this kind of like one will do for one meal and one for the other. In the conversation, I mentioned the bananas, that we could weigh them on the scales. These are scales. At the supermarket, we use them to weigh some loose fruits and vegetables. Weighing is putting something on the scales to know its weight. And depending on which country you're in, you might be using kilos or pounds to measure weight. And just so you know, one kilo equals 2.2 pounds. We've been talking a lot about weighing the ingredients in your kitchen. And a lot of people ask me, what scale should I buy? Nothing takes the joy out of food more than having to weigh it on a scale. Children, keep an eye out. So these, one kilo for now 50p, or half a kilo for 30p. So if you wanted a kilo, definitely buy the bigger one. In the conversation, I asked my wife how many lemons that she wanted, since they were loose. She replied, just a couple. Native English speakers often use the phrases, a couple of, or a couple, just to say two of something. A couple of my kids like it. Then there's a couple more things of oranges, the smaller oranges. Moving on now to food names. In the conversation, we mentioned some food names. Now, you may not be so familiar with all of these names, or you may be familiar with them, but not know how to pronounce them correctly. So here are a few that you may not know. Brie. Number two, brie. Rich, buttery, and spreadable. Cheddar. And then uh, so cheddar as well for the children and for topping my tray bake. Broccoli. Uh, cucumber for the children and also bananas for the children and some cucumber for my salad as well. Oh, and I got some broccoli as well. Grabbing one bag of broccoli and one bag of green beans. Chicken fillets. I got the children British free range chicken fillets. So I'll do them some like a mini roast dinner. When we were looking for meat, we talked about chickens and I mentioned a whole chicken. That is simply when you buy all of the chicken. The following clip will show an example of a whole chicken. Well, because when you buy a cut up chicken, first of all, it's more expensive than buying a whole chicken. We couldn't find whole chickens. I also noticed that my wife was mentioning a lot of vegetables or veggies. You might hear native English speakers referring to vegetables as veggies or just veg. My wife asked me to grab some lemons. Grab means to get something quickly. It's quite commonly used by native English speakers. 
Here are two other ways to say that. Can you pick up some lemons? Or can you get some lemons? We're going to watch a couple of clips now with the words grab and pick up being used. I grab some tilapia because it's on sale. I also grabbed that big thing of animal crackers. And I picked up this almond butter too. Another phrase that was used in our conversation was two bags at least. At least simply means the minimum amount of something. In the conversation, we were getting the vegetables. And I got a pack of tomatoes. My wife told me, these tomatoes don't look fresh. When we say something looks a certain way, we mean that it has a certain appearance. So in this example, we mean that the tomatoes don't appear to be fresh. Those do look good. Yeah, they do. Okay, that looks good. So does that. I think it's the sweater that makes her look much larger than necessary. In the bakery area, we talked about baking chocolate and so on. And I said, that sounds interesting. Sounds here in this context simply means seems. So in other words, you can say that seems interesting. But there's an old saying that Morgan Freeman can make anything sound interesting. I'm going to put that to the test. Now that sounds good. Just a pizza crust. I told her also, I'll get the milk and you get whatever cheese you like. Here I was using the word whatever to tell my wife that she could get any kind of cheese she wanted. You can say that differently by saying, you get whichever cheese you like, or you get any cheese you like. I also asked her in the meat and dairy section, would you rather have a whole chicken or chicken fillets? This kind of question is asked when you want to give somebody a choice, as in would you rather, and you want to know what their preference is. You can ask the same question differently in any of the following ways. Do you prefer to take a whole chicken or chicken fillets? Do you want to take a whole chicken or chicken fillets? Would you go for a whole chicken or chicken fillets? I think you get the point. Would you rather live off of only canned meat or canned vegetables? The answer was chicken fillets will do. Yes, keep it simple. Will do here is used to tell the other person that they're choosing the chicken fillets instead of the whole chicken. Now, she could easily have said any of the following. We'll take the chicken fillets. Or, let's go with the chicken fillets. Any of those is good. We also mentioned the word stuff. Stuff is just another way to say things when we're talking about things in general without having to name them. And this stuff, it's amazing. <laughs> Boy, they have a lot of stuff here. Okay, catch up. I'm impressed. I like to always pick stuff up, kind of feel it, and make sure it's, uh, it's fresh. My wife wanted to get some sweets for the children. And I said, lucky them. Because the kids were fortunate to get the sweets that I wasn't getting. Very lucky, yes. So we used this expression, lucky you, lucky him, lucky her, lucky them, or lucky us. We use it to express a kind of envy. You can also use it with people's names like, oh, lucky Jim, or lucky John. I then asked the question, are we done? This question can be used to ask someone if they've finished what they were doing. You can also ask, are we finished? At this point, my wife looked at me and said, I'll just take a quick look talking about going into the clothing section to see if there was anything new. This expression is used to say that a person or a group of people are just going to check or examine something briefly or for a short time. Other ways to say this would be, I'll go and see it quickly, or I'll take a quick peek. She said, I won't be long. This expression is used to say that whatever is going to happen 
is not going to take a long time. In this example, my wife was telling me that she was not going to take a long time to check the clothing section of the supermarket. I wonder how many husbands have heard that line before. So here's another way to say it. I'll do it quickly, okay? She asked me how the jacket looked on her. I said, I think it looks great on you. This expression is used to tell somebody that you believe that what they're trying on or wearing suits them or looks good on them. Now again, here are other ways to say that. That suits you very well. You look great in it. It makes you look fantastic. Now we also talked about the best before date in all of this. Uh, this is the date that we usually find on edible foods that will tell you if the food is still fresh. After this date, the quality of the food deteriorates. That big word, deteriorates, means that the quality of the food is not as good anymore. And now, here are a few clips where you can hear the phrase best before date being used. What's the best before date? I actually found this pack of crackers in the back of my cupboard and it has a best before date of April of 2014. What types of food should we stay away from once they're past their best before date? Early in the conversation, I asked my wife, what have you in mind? We use this question to ask somebody whether they have any plans. You can ask this in different ways, like, what are you thinking of? What do you have in mind? I asked her, fancy making some brownies? This question is used to check if the person wants to make some brownies. It's a kind of chocolate cake, very delicious. And here are a few different ways to ask the same thing. Do you want to make some brownies? Would you like to make some brownies? Then we said, all done. We use this phrase to show or say that we finished whatever we were doing. In the dialogue, my wife wanted to see if they had anything new in. When we say that a certain shop or a supermarket has something new in, we mean that they are selling a new item that they haven't been selling before. I then said, I thought we were shopping for groceries today. When we say that we're shopping for something, that means that we've gone out shopping to buy that specific thing. You can be shopping for groceries, clothes, or anything else. Or if you want to say it differently, I thought we were just buying groceries today. Or I thought we were here just for groceries today. I said to her regarding the jacket, you can always bring it back if you change your mind. When we say bring it back, we mean that we can return something to the place where we bought it and get either a refund or a replacement. If you change your mind, if you change your mind about something, that means you've changed your opinion about it. And you can also say you have second thoughts. Here's an example. I'm having second thoughts about buying that new computer. What have I changed my mind about? I had a new phone to return and I needed a receipt with it. A receipt is a piece of paper that's given to the customer by the shop or supermarket as a proof of purchase. So remember, always important, keep your receipt. The return policy. A return policy is the company rule about how customers can return their products. Usually, a return policy includes having a receipt, a certain period of time that has passed since you bought the product, and the product itself, of course. Then I went to customer services. Customer services is where you go for information, directions, returns, or any other issues that you might have in relation to your shopping experience at the supermarket or department store. I wanted to get something either changed or get a refund. In my case, I wanted to get a refund. Getting something changed is getting a replacement. Getting a refund means getting your money back. And then I said, let's go get these things. Here, get means buy 
or to pay for those things you have in your trolley or cart. Next, the checkout. When you're done and you're ready to pay, you go to the checkouts. There are usually two types of checkouts in supermarkets, self-service checkouts and the cashier. We go and get them scanned. You get something scanned by moving it along a scanner. We talked about the card reader. This is a card reader. It's just a device that allows you to pay for a product or a service by debit or credit card. We were asked for a club card at the supermarket. A club card is a loyalty card. It's a card that supermarkets provide their customers with to encourage them to shop there more often, allowing them to benefit from loyalty card special offers. Very good. Finally, the worst part of it all, payment. There are two different ways to pay. At the time of making this video, you could either pay by cash or by card. And finally, the PIN number was mentioned at the cashiers. PIN number is the number given to an individual to validate, big word, electronic transactions. And that's it for another video, everyone. Thank you all so much for watching. As usual, if you like this video, hit that like button. But if you didn't like it for whatever reason, please just let us know in the comments section and tell us what way you think it could be improved. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do and make sure your notifications button is on. So that's it, everyone. Thank you very much. Have a great day and see you next time. Bye, everyone. I hope you're great. Bye.